All right, hello everybody and welcome to the uh, this edition of the BioSB webinar. This webinar is going to be on um, our new IHC detect systems as well as um, our new immunofluorescence antibodies, both uh, direct and indirect, and their detection systems, as well as a review of our new and current tissue and cell line microarrays. Um, some of you may know me. My name is Patrick Patterson. Um, I'm the marketing director here at BioSB. Um, I started here in April 1st, 2015. Um, I graduated from California Lutheran University with a bachelor's degree in multimedia with an emphasis in visual effects and motion graphics. Um, my responsibilities here include all the marketing material that includes catalogs, brochures, videos, news newsletters, um, promotions. Um, this also includes conventions and distributor relations. If you're a distributor with us, you probably have lots of contact with me. Um, kind of moving forward to let you know how the webinar is going to go, uh, I'm going to hand it off to Alfonso, who's going to introduce himself and take you through our new products. If you, any of you have any questions, feel free to um, use the chat or the question but function in the um, little go to webinar applet there. If you can type your questions in there, um, that way we can go through the whole presentation without being interrupted. And then when we get to the end, we'll do a quick um, question answer section. We'll go through any questions um, people might have had through the presentation and then also any questions you guys have after the fact. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and move along to our CEO, Dr. Alfonso Harris. Thank you, Patrick. Um, it's a pleasure to have you with us. And as you know, we had um, two webinars related to the new 66 antibodies we launched for immunohistochemistry in 2021. And today we're gonna to be talking about all the products additional to that line of products. Um, most of you probably know me, um, but this is my background. I'm a doctor of veterinary medicine. My area of expertise there was uh, immunotherapy and in vitro fertilization. I hold a PhD in molecular biology from UCSB, and I mainly work on pharmacokinetics of cancer drugs. Veterinary medicine also work and um, the development of recombinant vaccines. After my PhD, I work at Orthodiagnostic Systems in Carpinteria, California, with the development of chlamydia, hysteria, and other ELISA systems. After that, I worked as a director of monoclonal antibody development and production at DACO in Carpinteria, California, where I started the cell culture bioreactor facility. I also work in R&D and work in the development of the LSAV, Envision, CSA, GenPoint, and Herceptist technologies, which eventually became the first ever component diagnostics to identify women that benefit from Herceptist Herceptin therapy. I founded BioSB Inc. on October 1st, 1998. Our mission at BioSB is to develop high quality immunochemicals and technology for molecular pathology, provide outstanding customer and technical service to our customers, manufacture and develop under ISO and FDA certified products, and we excel in the development and marketing unique environmentally friendly products for immunohistochemistry, fish, and fish. We provide biomedical laboratories with the tools to improve diagnosis, prognosis, and cancer treatment prediction. And we also do a social contribution to our community through internships for local, junior, and high school, as well as for UCSB students. The University of California, Santa Barbara is not even 10 minutes away from us. And we also offer employment to people in our local community. Our core values are passion, adaptability, quality, integrity, teamwork, and accountability. As I mentioned before, I founded this company in 1998 and incorporated in the state of California on May, May 11th to 1999. 2003 to 2007, we work with Roach in Latin America on the IHC standardization of Herceptus and Matera. Herceptus, sorry, Herceptus and Herceptin treatment. 
is related to HER2 new in Matera CD20 for lymphomas. 2005, we started our reagent and hybridoma cell line development and OEM supplier of immunochemicals to other companies. We partnered with Satovation in 2009 and became FDA CGMP certified in 2010. We began and partnered with Thermo Fisher in 2012 for automation and um, incorporated BIOS in 2015. In 2016, we received the European CE marking for medical devices. In 2019, we uh, got the uh, ISO 13485 upgraded to 2016. We used to have the, the one before that. In 2019, we launched our MOS uh, immunohistochemistry and indirect immunofluorescence. And in 2020, we launched the first multiplex, multiplex IHC products, as along with the SARS-CoV-2 line of products, which were submitted for FDA, EUA, and CEIVD. Now, I'll talk about briefly our product and technologies. As I mentioned, we're a molecular pathology company that offers equipment both manual and automated. Um, we also have a large range of antibodies and DNA probes, as well as micropolymers and ancillaries for environmentally friendly solutions for immunohistochemistry. Now, briefly about immunohistochemistry, we have 298 rabbit monoclonals. 270 mouse monoclonals, 63 rabbit polyclonals for a total of 6031 IVD antibodies. We manufacture mostly recombinant antibodies, even though this business is continuously changing and we live the most exciting times in that aspect. Now, nowadays, for example, for the SARS-CoV-2, we just have the database and we were able to then uh, uh, sequence and eventually transfect on HEX 293 antibody share for chains, uh, light and heavy chains for pairing and expression in cell lines. But nowadays, you know, these are the CRISPR Cas9 times and we have the privilege of work with this technology to edit different cell lines and convert them into different FC regions, rat, mouse, rabbit, and we are working hard on using these applications for multiplexing, especially as it relates to immunotherapy, as well as developing antibodies using CRISPR. We normally uh, use uh, uh, semi-solid media. You can see here some of the clones and eventually these clones are uh, selected. Uh, they go through a long validation process, Western blot, ELISA, and then immunohistochemistry using cell line microarrays, tissue microarrays, both normal and cancers. And eventually they're grown in either uh, hollow fiber bioreactors or spinning vessels or the cell line bioreactors. I mentioned before that we launched 66 new products for immunohistochemistry. And today we're going to talk about the Tintofast or MOS antibodies, new detection systems, multiplex detection systems, and TMAs and cell line microarrays. Briefly, we'll talk about or play this video for you as it relates to the antibodies, which we had a webinar in the recent past, but this should give you a pretty good idea about what we launched or developed during, during the pandemic in 2020, which actually be, became the largest amount of um, antibodies we have ever launched in the history of this company. 
BioSP is proud to announce the launch of 66 new IBD antibodies for immunohistochemistry. This generation of new recombinant antibodies offers higher affinity, sensitivity, and specificity when compared to the previous generation. Among the new products are 10 new antibodies for breast cancer, such as ATM, Aurora B, CXCL12, and PELP1. 10 new antibodies for lung cancer, including BRG1, INSM1, Musashi2, Pygopus2, and YAP1. Seven new antibodies for brain cancer, including ATRX, CXCR4, GAB1, IDH1, and MGMT. Five new antibodies for immunotherapy, including ICOS, IFN Alpha, IFN Gamma, Tigit, and TIM3. New antibodies for prostate cancers, sarcomas, and soft tissue cancers, such as Caspase 3, TMPRSS2, fumarate hydratase, PAX7, and TLE1. Three new antibodies for Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma applications, including BOB1, CD137, and TIA1. A new PRAME antibody for melanoma diagnosis. New antibodies for ovarian cancer, such as ARID1A and FOXL2. New antibodies for mesothelioma, such as AGG1 and MTAP. New antibodies for thyroid and parathyroid cancer applications, such as HMGA2. And many new antibodies for cervical cancer, lymphoma, leukemia, head and neck, kidney, colon, germ cell, and pancreatic cancers, as well as infectious disease applications. This launch also includes an entire panel of antibodies for SARS-CoV-2 IHC, its receptors ACE2, CD147, and TMPRSS2, markers of thrombosis like tissue factor, factor H, and unique antibodies being used to elucidate the COVID-19 pathogenesis and the cytokine storm syndrome by IHC, like IL-1A, IL-1B, IL-6, TNFA-IP2, IFN-alpha, and IFN-gamma. In addition, we have launched five new antibodies for fast MOS IHC, three new IHC detection kits, three new complete multiplex kits, and new tissue and cell line microarrays. All of our new antibodies for immunohistochemistry are now available in concentrate and convenient Tinto pre-dilute format to meet your laboratory needs. So now we're going to talk about detection systems for immunohistochemistry. What is a detection system? As you know, it's used for immunohistochemistry. It's a multi-component system or a kit. Uh, it generates a color change in tissues, and obviously it's linked to a primary antibody. They can be polymer or biotin-based. This is just staining staining on the tissue and then staining counter stain against CD20. And um, we have uh, three systems for immunohistochemistry and others for immunofluorescence and MOS for intraoperatory immunohistochemistry. For biotin, we, uh, our product is a, a two-step immunodetector system and then polymer base, we have a polydetector and polydetector plus, which is one and two steps, respectively. The components of the kits, normally we have a peroxidase block or a blocking solution, a linker, either a biotin or a polymer, a label, we normally use alkaline phosphatase or horseradish peroxidase enzymes to generate chromogenic uh, signals. And for substrate chromogens, we have DAB brown or HRP, DAB brown, AEC red, HRP green, HRP black, and HRP blue. For alkaline phosphatase, we have alk blue, alk red, alk brown, alk magenta, and alk scarlet. What's a micropolymer? Uh, it's a smaller molecule than the traditional molecules that we had the privilege to develop a DACO in the 90s. And back then it was a revolutionary technology, but they were fairly large molecules. And I'll explain. This is a cell. This is the traditional polymer, 800,000 backbone molecule with 50 to 70 HRPs, which is up to 
3 million Daltons, then 10 IgGs, anti-mouse, rabbit, whole immunoglobulin, for a total of 5 million Daltons. Our micropolymer is a fraction of that, uh, 300,000 kilodalton backbone molecule with 40 HRPs. And here we don't use the whole immunoglobulin against mouse and rabbit. We use the anti-mouse, anti-rabbit FAB prime, which is the monomeric fraction that detects the antigen. In this context, anti-mouse or anti-rabbit immunoglobulins. And it's 3.7 million Daltons. So basically, uh, the, our polydetector micropolymer does not have the constraints or problems of penetrating all compartments, membranous, cytoplasmic, and especially nuclear, that are the ones that may be more, more challenging. While the traditional polymers, uh, and I remember this when we introduced the DACON vision in Toronto, Canada in 1995, and I did mention uh, the fact that the, the systems were non-biotin, the great systems for membranous and cytoplasmic uh, detection of um, epitopes, but the struggle getting into the nuclear compartment. And I have to mention that I did get in trouble because the marketing people at DACO did not like that. But the truth of the matter is, uh, uh, people with science background use this type of technologies and they know better. Um, so micropolymer allows stronger, stronger signals because of easier tissue penetration to all cellular compartments. They generate less background than other polymers because we do not use the whole immunoglobulin. We use the anti-mouse, anti-rabbit FAB prime fragment. And here we have a one-step polymer, the polydetector. And you can see here the FAB prime detecting the FC region of a mouse or a rabbit immunoglobulin. Then it has a backbone molecule and a lot of enzymes that are able to generate a chromogenic reaction. Here we have a two-step, the primary antibody, detecting its antigen, then a secondary antibody, which is a regular immunoglobulin, and then let's say the goat anti rabbit, goat anti uh, mouse, and then a polymer wrap that has a rabbit anti goat FC region, FAB prime uh, monomeric molecule that eventually catalyzes the deposition of the color reaction. This is just a comparison of, no, of two non-biotin two-step polymer detection systems. This is a negative control. This were studies conducted a while ago. Some companies may have improved, but back then, uh, this is the negative control polydetector. This is the Leica refined. We were shocked to see that the dark, sorry, the Leica and the Thermo Picture Plus had some non-negative, uh, non-specific negative, uh, non-specific results. You know, this is dark condition. Again, this this and, and ours were negative. Um, I hope they have um, uh, improved those products. This is just another example using uh, membranous uh, HER2 nu mouse monoclonal antibody 1 to 200 and breast carcinoma. You see the polydetector typical reactivity, the Leica Refine, the Thermo Picture Plus, and the DACON Vision. In this context, all of them detect membranous targets with acceptable results, even though the Thermo was a little weakish. And here is my point about the DACO. You can see here with uh, progesterone, the expected reactivity with the BIOS B polydetector, the Leica Refine, and the Thermal Picture Plus micropolymers versus the DACO that is a larger molecule and it has problems penetrating the nuclear compartment. There is a way to uh, re resolve these issues and it's usually having a better heat epitope retrieval in longer times and also larger incubation of the antibodies. At the end of the day, we strive to have a better sensi sensi 
selectivity and specificity for immunochemistry. And here's an example with Al Blue, Sarkaratinel score on follow open tube, and in a call on key 67 in red. In green, we have a CD20 on a tonsil, and then P40 on a prostatic uh, tissue. Again, I already mentioned, you know, that we have a one-step polydetector HRP in Alphos, and then the polydetector plus a two-step, and then I'll talk about the multi detector, which is two or three steps, and I'll, I'll explain that later. Now the polydetector HRP, basically, you know, we do a block, we apply the antibody 30 to 45 minutes or 30 to 60 minutes, and then the label 45 minutes and the AB five minutes. And these type of systems are ideal for multiplex applications, double, triple, quadruple stains. The Polytector Plus uh, is very sensitive and it's ideal for low affinity or mutation specific antibodies like PAX8, CIMIC, PD1, PDL1, MLH1, MSH2, MSH6, PMS2, and RAS, the Q61R mutation, BRAF, B600E mutation, the IDH1, R132H. So it's a, a more sensitive system. And this is what we use to detect all different types of antigens. The BioSP Tinto Stainer is a rapid, open, and flexible automated system for immunohistochemistry, immunocytochemistry, and immunofluorescence. Ideal for pathology labs that need a flexible automation solution to help minimize sample turnaround time while remaining cost effective. It comes equipped with everything you need to automate your lab, including the computer unit, slide and reagent barcode printers, and reagent vials. This rapid system integrates barcode scanning for reagents and samples to optimize lead time and reduce user error. This system is completely open, giving you the ability to use any detection system, reagent, or ancillary from any supplier allowing you to control your own costs. With complete flexibility, you can use any of BioSP's validated protocols or program your own. Any protocol can be created. Reagent and times are completely customizable, allowing you to program double or multiple stains, which is not the case with most Ventana, Leica, or DACA instruments. With three different slide application zones, you can even adjust where on the slide the reagent is applied and exactly how much. With slide ID program, you can receive your reports at the end of every run containing the case ID, slide ID, as well as the antibody and detection system used. The BioSpeed Tintostainer comes programmed with all of our rapid and mouse monoclonal and polyclonal antibodies. Third-party reagents can be easily programmed in. The Tinto Stainer also comes programmed with all of BioSB's detection system protocols. Protocols can also be built from scratch or customized, allowing the user to easily perform double or multiple oh, stains. You can see here the BioSB Poly Detector Plus HRP protocol programmed into the system, with the yellow highlight indicating where on the slide the reagent will be applied. During every test, the Tinto Stainer will clean the slides with solution, Clean the probe, load the reagent, blow air across the slide to clean, then dispense the reagent. The BioSB Tinto Stainer needs minimal service. Simply run the Tinto Stainer DAB away through the system every week. Annual service is provided by BioSpeed to clean and inspect important components, such as the hoses, probes, sensors, and seals. For those interested in financing, we offer Tinto Stainer Reagent Agreements, which include the Tinto Stainer, Your Choice in Epitope Retrieval Solution, Detection System, and any primary antibody at the same price per slide. The cost is based on the number of tests your lab performs per year. The agreements include complete setup, training, service, support, and repair. Contact our customer service department for details or go to our website at www.biosb.com.
So I just wanted to show that video and just to show you, you know, the way we do IC, we use the tint stainer and the Polytector Plus micropolymer to generate most of our immunofluorescence, fast moss, um, dual stainings, and, and regular immunohistochemistry. We also offer a biotin-based detection system. It's highly sensitive, it's fast, cost-effective, and it's ideal for research institutions or clinical settings with tissue processing fixation issues because it's a small molecule. Uh, the strength is very sensitive, cost-effective. It comes with the peroxides block and the DAB. The issue is that it can cause false positives due to endogenous biotin on different tissues. And this reaction can be blocked with biotin blocker, which adds two steps. And in clinical settings, yeah, normally it's not as widely used as the polymer detection systems. Now, we'll talk about multiplex immunohistochemistry. We have launched three new kits, uh, the PIN multi-detector HRPAP that includes cytokeratin, the detection of cytokeratin 34B12, P63, and racemase, the perinuclear invasion carcinoma multi-detector, or PNI, HRPAP kit that detects cytokeratin 5.6 and nerve growth factor receptor to identify and nerves and the multi-detector HRPAP HPV that detects P16 and K67. The PIN multi-detector, as I mentioned, detects P63 and cytokeratin 34B12 that are expressed in the basal cells of healthy prostates. And you can see here the CK34B12 and uh, magenta with us all scarlet. In the nuclear here, we see the myoepithelial cells stained with P63. This is a normal uh, prostatic uh, uh, gland. While these glands express racemase are transformed, and racemase in the glands has been found to uh, be expressed significantly higher in, prostat in prostatic carcinoma and can help distinguish PNI from benign lesions. Again, what we do is we cocktail the P63 and CK34B12, and then we also cocktail uh, an anti-mouse um, and an anti-rabbit, either one is HRP and the other is Alphos, and then detect with the different chromogens, the expression of these markers. And then on, a, on another step, then we detect the racemase using an anti-rabbit HRP, then an HRP green. That's how we can generate three colors. Now for the PNI carcinoma, uh, Perineural invasion, as you probably know, especially in dermatology, dermatopathology, uh, has uh, significant implications on patient, on patient staging, prognosis, and their management with regards to treatments. And the PNI multi detector is able to detect the basal or squamous cell carcinomas or different types of carcinomas, along with the nerves and 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 whether or not that is part of the invasion process of different types of cancers. The HPV multi-detector, HRPAP kit, 
uh, again, detects P16 and K67. And as you know, P16 is a tumor suppressor gene commonly used to detect the squamous and glandular neoplasias with patients that have a HPV high risk integrated into the cervical cells. And, and K67 is a nuclear cell proliferation marker that combined with P16 help to identify high grade lesions in cervical cancer and other head and neck conditions. We launched this product and now it's CIVD approved in Europe for formal and fixed peripheral tissues, but we're currently doing studies with liquid cytology and hopefully in the future we'll expand its applications to that specific area. Now I'll talk about fast MOS immunohistochemistry. We have developed polymers to be able to do immunohistochemistry in five minutes or up to 20 minutes for difficult targets, usually like PRAIM or P63 or SOX10 nuclear proteins on frozen sections. So this technology is used for intraoperatory immunohistochemistry where a fast uh, result is needed. Moss micrographic surgery was developed by Dr. Frederick Moss in the 1930s. It's a surgical technique that used to treat skin cancer, especially melanomas, squamous cell carcinomas, basal cell carcinomas. And this technique progressively removes uh, skin tissues and then examines the tissues under the microscope in order to assess clear margins. If the margins are not clear, then another round of surgery is done when, while the patient waits. And this reduces the amount of recurrences. Um, the challenge if using HNE is recurrence, again, especially with melanoma. And that's why we have developed all these different antibodies and technologies to detect the presence of androgen receptor CD31, cytocarotene 5.6, cytocarotene cocktail A1, A3, EPCOM, BER, AP4, EMA, P40, P63, protoplanin, and nerve growth factor receptor, especially for carcinomas, basal cell carcinomas, squamous cell carcinomas in the skin. And then CD34 for their matofibrosarcoma protuberance. For melanomas, we have K67, MARC1, melanoma cocktail, HMB45, MIF, PRAIN, which is a new antibody for us, SOX10. And then for neuroendocrine tumors, we have chromorganin A, synaptophysin. And for Page's uh, disease, we have cytokeratin 7. And then for uh, primary continuous adnexal neoplasms, we have a dipophylline androgen receptor, CK56, EMA, P63, and, P6, and podoplanin. Here we have a, a, a melanoma. You can see some of the melanin, and you can easily see the nuclear expression of SOX10 on a frozen melanoma detected by our fast mass SOX10. And then here we have uh, PRAIN immunohistochemistry in green, it's a dual staining, and also in uh, scarlet color, we have a cytoplasmic expression of MARC1, a dual staining on a frozen melanoma tissue. And then uh, CK1A1A3 um, on a basal cell carcinoma. This video basically exp explains this technology. I'm going to ask Patrick to do some voiceover. <laughs> But basically, uh, a lot of MOS laboratories are not very familiar with chemistry. They don't have a lot of space, especially small institutions. And it's widely used in the United States, but not 
necessarily outside of the United States. I know in Europe and South America, there are a few labs that are beginning to integrate this technology. And we have the thing to stay in here for larger institutions, but also the Tinto detector. This is a technology that uses capillary gap slides. Uh, they are paired across from each other and enable the easy handling of uh, reagents. This is a 30 well reagent holder. Uh, one applies you know, 100 microliters per two slides. So it's 50 to 100 microliters per tissue. I already mentioned the different uh, MOS, immunohistochemistry uh, antibodies. And uh, now here we use two detection systems and I'll talk, this, this video relates to the polydetector, the, the MOS polydetector HRP is basically uh, uh, 60 seconds to four minutes primary antibody HRP chromogen, and we have a reaction in five to 10 minutes. This is just a demonstration on how this capillary gap system, which is semi-automated, works. You first identify the 10 different areas where one can load capillary gap slides. The slides are mounted across from each other you see the triangles are 75 microns raised. And once they are paired and loaded, they create a, a capillary gap of 150 microns. And that enables an easy handling of slides. And these systems are widely used, especially in Latin America, Brazil, Argentina, Chile, Peru, Mexico, Mexico has probably the most. And the slides are easy to handle. And right now, you know, it's being washed. After they're washed, then either the frozen sections, or it can be used for perfect embedded tissues as well. But then, you know, you draw the peroxidase blocker for 30 seconds. And then one incubates at 37 degrees using this incubator. Okay. After the 30 seconds, one eliminates the reagent using this absorbent pad. The solution is absorbed into the pad, and then one proceeds to do the washing after the three washes, three to five washes, then one applies the primary antibody. And in this context, you know, we use uh, anywhere from 60 seconds to uh, four minutes. This very fast immunohistochemistry is ideal for MART1 and cytokeratins. But when using cytokeratins, we apply a one minute uh, immunodigester, which is proteinase K digestion. And that helps to detect CK7, CK1A3, or other cytokeratins. Then after that, we apply the, the label, which is the, the polymer. We draw the uh, reagent into the cap gap, make sure that it covers the tissues. Tissues are normally mounted on the lower third of the slides so that they can be easily covered with the different reagents during the process. Then after eliminating the reagent, one proceeds to do a wash. And 
And then the chromogen is applied for one or two minutes. Frozen sections, we normally recommend for them to be cut at four to five microns, like we do with immunohistochemistry. And then the, um, the tissues are fixed for two minutes with acetone. And after that, they are air dry, and then one proceeds to do the immunohistochemistry. So this procedure is done while the patient is waiting um, to see if another round of MOS surgery is needed to remove any remaining uh, tumor. I got into this technology because I myself had a MOS surgery uh, and it was uh, like initially, it was a two rounds of surgery. You can see here, you know, how the, the hematoxyl is being drawn into the com capillary compartment. Anyway, I did have more surgery and I was shocked to learn that uh, what, the, what it was diagnosed as uh, basal cell carcinoma, uh, was diagnosed with hematoxylin and clear margins, you know, and I asked the surgeon, what about if one cell is left there and eventually it's gonna return? And, and his response was, well, that's the way we do business. And I said, well, this is a 19th century technology. And I said, why don't you use immunistic chemistry, you know, cytokeratins? to assess more objectively the clear margins. And in general, they don't use it, but he challenged me to say, why don't you change that? And so that's why we began developing immunohistochemistry for moss. And at the end of the day, I took some of the tissues and it wasn't even a, a, a basal cell carcinoma. I had a, a um, cutaneous lymphadenoma, which is normal, so I can still say that I have never had cancer. Anyway, here's a Mark I melanoma tissue, uh, cytokeratin A1, A3, um, uh, a basal cell carcinoma, another squamous cell carcinoma on brown. So we have both DAB or HRP green. Here's a melanoma with SOX10, and you see melanin, a SOX10. This is actually a formally fixed peripheral meditation that we can also use the same technology, but of course we had to do uh, heat epitome retrieval. Here is CAM 5.2 cytokeratin on extra mammary pages disease tissue, and then cytokeratin 5.6 on a frozen tissue. Again, CK7 on Pages disease. Sarcaritin MNF116 on a ba uh, basal cell carcinoma. So I already explained how it works. You know, the five to 10 minutes, it's basically a polytector, you know, where we do uh, 1.5 to four minutes of the primary antibody, then, uh, uh, 1.5 to three minutes of the polymer, and then we catalyze the deposition of the chromogen with a one to two minute application. And one thing is we have another component that I'll mention later under ancillary is, is the fast chromoprotector that eliminates the need to mount using alcohols and silines. And it's a 30 second up, 30 second application, it creates a biopolymer cover, and then we, we can permanent mount moss. This is just an example. This is a melanoma uh, with Mark I on a formally fixed part of tissue, but when one can use the same detection system with a five, 10 minute protocol, but if they are formally fixed part of tissues, one has to do 
retrieval, which was accomplished here with 15 minutes deep trade retrieval on pressure cooker. Here's a forced frozen melanoma, again, mark one with DAB, five, 10 minutes, no retrieval. This is just a, a cytokeratin A1 and 3 comparing DAB versus HRP green. Same deal, cytokeratin 7 on an extra mammary pages disease. Uh, here we did an immunodigester one minute in both, and this is brown, this is green. Now we have another detection system. ISD is now offering a new mass noise quantum detector plus detection system with a fast ISD detection of melanoma, basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and other most surgery related conditions. The most common reason for recurrence of skin cancers after most surgery is residual undetected tumor. Our new line of tinta fast products designed for frozen tissue IC has demonstrated greater sensitivity than routine HME stains, which are difficult to interpret. The MOSE Polydetector Plus kit incorporates an immunoglobulin link and an FAB micropolymer label. This multiple component FAB micropolymer delivers a highly sensitive and more specific signal than any competing IC diagnostic kit. The fast MOSE detection kits were developed to work on our tinto detector immuno DNA system, which comes complete with a slide handle, tinto detector incubator, a compact stainless steel workstation, nine solution dishes, and five 30 well reagent holders, as well as everything you need to start doing diagnostic immunohistochemistry in your lab. The key to the tinto detector functionality is the tinto detector slide holder, which holds up to 20 slides and functions by drawing up a reagent into the slides with capillary gap technology. The FASMOS Polydetector Plus protocol is a 20-minute IHC protocol that starts by turning on the incubator with the switch on the back to be used for heat-induced epitope retrieval and preheating the Tinto Detector incubator to 110 degrees Celsius. While the incubator is heating, load the Tinto Detector slide handle with the Tinto Detector cap gap slides. Be sure the white triangles at the bottom are facing each other to create a capillary gap. Submerge the slides in 1x amino DNA retriever citrate to ensure complete slide coverage and incubate for three to five minutes in the Tinto Detector Incubator at 110 degrees Celsius. Cool down the slides for one minute to bring them to room temperature. Drain the slides by pressing down on the slide handle to release the liquid. Proceed to wash three times in amino DNA washer, TBST, or PBST solution. Apply the primary antibody to just fill each reagent well. Draw the antibody into the slide by pressing the slides into the reagent wells. The capillary gap action draws the antibody up the slides and covers each tissue sample. Holding the slide handle at an angle can help the reagent get drawn up. Leave the slide handle to incubate at room temperature for three to five minutes in an empty solution dish. Wash three times in ImmunoDNA washer, TBST, or PBST solution. Apply the FastMOSE Paw Detector Plus link to the reagent well. Draw into the slides. and incubate at room temperature for four minutes. Wash three times in ImmunoDNA washer, TBST, or PBST solution. Apply the FASMOS Polydetector Plus micropolymer label to the reagent well. Draw into the slides and incubate at room temperature for four minutes. While the slides are incubating with the label, proceed to mix the substrate chromogen solution by combining one milliliter of DAB brown or HRP green buffer with one drop of DAB brown or HRP green chromogen. and apply it to the region. 
once the slides have completed incubating for four minutes with the label, wash three times in ImmunoDNA washer, TBSG, or PBSG solution. Draw the substrate chromogen into the slides. Incubate for one minute for HRP green or two minutes for DAV brown at room temperature. Wash three times in ImmunoDNA washer, TBSD, or PBSD solution. Apply the hematoxylin or nuclear flash red capture stain to the reagent well. Draw the capture stain into the slide. You can really see the capillary gap action happening here. Incubate the slides for 30 seconds for hematoxylin or one minute for nuclear fast red. Wash three times in ImmunoDNA washer, TBST, or PBST solution. Once the slides are clean, you can remove the slides from the handle and proceed to cover slip and mounting. This new FASMOS Pod Detector Plus detection system is a highly sensitive system, especially designed for the detection of tough nuclear targets, such as P40, P63, and SOX10. And with our new FASMOS technology, you can get these diagnostic results in only 20 minutes. Visit our website to order online or get more information. BioSB, Bioscience for the World. The one thing uh, that we wanted to mention is the fact that we are doing heat epitope retrieval for three minutes for nuclear targets on frozen sections that have been fixed uh, for two minutes with acetone. And we found that even though there are no cross linkings by formal fixation, doing this three minute heat epitope retrieval on frozen sections really helps to enhance um, the signal intensity. And for these targets, we use the FASMOS Polydetector Plus, which again, you know, includes the application of uh, three to five minutes heat epitope retrieval, five minutes antibody, four minutes link, four minutes label, two minutes chromogen, and contrastain for a total of 20 minutes. Again, you already saw some of this. Um, this is uh, a melanoma. And here you have the Polydector Plus with a three minute incubation for cytokeratins. And here we have it for the Polydector for 10 minute protocol, but using pressure cooking, which can also be used for five minutes, but it takes longer than the Tinto detector incubator because temperature to reach up to, you know, 100 degrees takes like another 15 minutes. Another example, a 20 minute protocol with a Polytector Plus versus a 10 minute protocol of P40. And you see the difference in stain intensity with the Polytector Plus versus the Polytector. But in this context, in order to detect this, we had to do pressure cooking. Now, we have launched uh, adipopulin, chromogranin A, K67, Prame, and synaptophysin. And I'll briefly talk about Prame. The PRIM gene was originally discovered through genomic testing, found to be expressed in around 87% of metastatic melanomas and 83% of primary melanomas, and is quickly developed into my IFC staple to diagnose most melanoma subtypes. This new antibody for immunohistochemistry is now available in concentrate and convenient tinto acrylate formats to meet your laboratory needs. Order online in the United States or through our network of distributors internationally. BioSB, Bioscience for the World. Again, um, the PRAME, uh, this gene encodes an antigen that is predominantly expressed in human melanomas and is 
recognize but cytolytic T lymphocytes. It's not expressed in normal tissues, unlike Mark one or SOX10, except in testes. Uh, frame can be found in 94.4 acral melanomas, 90.25 superficial spreading melanomas, 90% of nodular melanomas, 88.6 of lentigo maligna melanomas, 35% of desmoplastic melanomas. Unfortunately, some cutaneous nevi, 13.6% of them, including Spitz nevi, can also be detected and by this target. Uh, the expression may be useful for diagnostic purposes to support suspected diagnosis of melanoma on regular pathology or, you know, or uh, immunohistochemistry of regular formal and fixed peripheral tissues. But it's also a valuable uh, new marker for margin assessment on known brain positive melanomas during mass surgery. Again, it's expression in nevis, solar lent uh, uh, lentigos, uh, benign non lichenal skins can represent the challenge, but in general, it's uh, now considered a better marker than Mark I or SOX10. Here you have a malignant melanoma and both sides, left and right, and then moss uh, uh, here with uh, moss with a melanoma and frozen section and then prime and mark one prime in green and mark one expression cytoplasmically with scarlet now um, with regards to ancillaries i just want to mention you know that we are committed to having uh, solvent free immunohistochemistry and we have developed a new generation of Tinto the paraffinators that eliminate the need of uh, solvents like silines or alcohols. We have the citrate EDTA. And we also have the chromoprotectors that allows us to eliminate the use of silines and alcohols when mounting tissues. This is just an example of a chromoprotector uh, being used with a permanent mounting of AEC red, HRP green, or HRP blue that normally tend to fade. But when we use the chromoprotector, protector, we can do permanent mounting without having to use silines or alcohols and, and then mount with a permanent mounting media to protect the signals. Uh, we also have a, a non-solvent, a solvent-free side green permanent mounter that can be used for a total solvent-free immunohistochemistry. And that's a point here of mentioning that when I see a station fish procedures are using are, are use, using the tinto de paraffinyl citrate or ETA to deparaffinize, rehydrate, and retrieve form and fixed parenthetic tissues, the chroma protector to preserve stains, the side green permamounter, they allow for a solvent-free environment. Uh, last but not least, we'll talk about direct and indirect immunofluorescence. As you know, one can detect uh, antigens using uh, fluorescent label antibodies to generate sig uh, fluorogenic signals, or we can detect primary antibodies with label antibodies or detection systems. We are uh, doing a whole lot of formally fixed paraffin embedded tissue immunohistochemistry that now is being widely used, especially in autoimmunity. And for that, we use heat epitope retrieval where we deparaffinize tissues and citrate uh, or EDTA and then do immunofluorescence. We have a large array of uh, direct immunofluorescent products, uh, both pre-diluted or concentrates to detect albumin C1Q, C3C, C4C, fibrinogen, IgA, IgD, IgE, IgG, IgM, kappa and lambda. Here's a representative stain on a frozen section of IgA on lupus erythematosus and the same deal for another IgA. Um, fibrinogen, IgA, IgG, C, 
for D, albumin and lambda are presented here. Uh, we do have a new detection system that enable us to detect fast and efficiently any antibody of the 631 we have, but I'll emphasize the new line of our immunity and um, rejection antibodies, albumin, amyloid, C1Q, C3C, C3D, C4C, C4D, collagen, cytokeratin, 5-6, cytomegalovirus, fibrinogen, IgA, D, E, IgG, IgG4, IgM, kappa, lambda, P40, P63, PLA, 2R1 and SV40. This is an example C1Q in fibrinogen. And this is our uh, Ampli detector. The Ampli detector uses the Polydetector Plus technology where an antibody is detected by a link and then by a polymer. And the peroxidase uh, enzyme catalyzes the deposition of a substrate that is labeled with in this context, fluorescein. So we normally apply this to both frozens or uh, formalin fixed paraffin embedded tissues. When we use formalin fixed paraffin embedded tissues, we do need to do heat epitope retrieval after the paraffinization, and then we block endogenous peroxidase five minutes, wash. The antibody is incubated for five minutes, a link for five minutes, the label for five minutes, and the ampli detector fitch. Then for five minutes, then we do fluoromounter. And this enables us to do or use antibodies that we normally use for immunohistochemistry, also for immunofluorescence. And here is a sample albumin, amyloid A. C1Q, C3C, C3D, C4C, C4D, collagen, cytomegalovirus, carbinogen, IgA, IgD, Ig, IgG, IgG4 as, a, as an example. Also, we have here cytomegalovirus on a frozen section and SV40. And usually these are used for kidney rejection. Uh, the mounting for immunofluorescence, we have a fluoromounter or fluoromounter with DAPI. Here's an example of fluoromounter, you know, it preserves for days uh, the fluorescein signal. This is a C1Q uh, with fluorescein detector with ampli detector. And then uh, here, the mounting is done with fluoromounter that contains DAPI, which is this blue contrasting. Now, we're going to finish with the area of microarrays. And microarrays uh, are usually uh, contain a small number of formal effects, paraffin embedded tissues or cell lines that are mounted together on a single slide. Here we have a 23 core. And it, it has a wide range of applications, including basic research, prognostic oncology, and drug discovery. And we normally use two millimeter cores. And the College of American Pathologists uh, admitted this paper where they specified how to validate immunohistochemistry through the use of different tissues or tissue microarrays and establish that laboratories must validate all assays before they can be used to test on patient specimens. Basically, the, the guidelines establish that if you have a predicted marker like HER2 nu, PD1, PDL1, you need to have 20 positive and 20 negative cases to validate that specific new marker or the addition of a new clone or, or changing of a non-predictive marker like CD45 or uh, cytokeratins, you need 10 positive and 10 negative cases. Or if you change the incubation times or vendors, you need two positive and two negative cases. Obviously, it's a lot of work. So we 
internally to develop antibodies, we use a lot of tissue and cell line microarrays, anywhere from two to 31 cores. They are two millimeters in diameter. They are a great resource to optimize, validate uh, our immunochemicals, even detection systems. And we do have 11 core normal or 23 core normal or cancer, 11 and 23 core cancer tissue microarrays and a lymphoid seven that has tonsil, thymus, lymph node and spleen that is great for it, especially for immunotherapy. But all these are the greatest uh, tools for us to develop, validate, and also for our customers to do the same thing for their immunochemicals. We also have cell line microarrays like ALG1, GIST, neuroblastoma, BRAF, V600E that has a specific mutation, lung cancer, melanomas, EGFR, HPV, PD1. PDL1, HER2 nu, P10, breast cancer, immunotherapy, multi cancer. This is an example of uh, an adenovirus cell line microarray. And we also have cy cytomegalovirus infected or transfected cell line microarrays that are formally fixed perfect embedded tissues or, or cell line, sorry, microarrays, either two cores normally one negative and one positive, very cell zoster, Epstein-Barr, uh, hepatitis B, herpes 8, SV40, and an H helicobacter pylori. We also have a nine core that includes adenovirus, Epstein-Barr, cytomegalovirus, um, hepatitis B, herpes simplex, herpes 8, very cell zoster, SV40, and a negative control. And here is just an example of the uh, helicobacter pylori. We are launching two uh, human uh, PMAs for PIN, uh, three core androgen receptor cell line microarray, a ROS1 cell line microarray, an IDH R132H mutation cell line microarray, and an MMR microarray for MSH2, MSH6, MH, MLH1, and PMS2 controls. And with regards to future products, we're actively working to develop a new generation stainer. This is the Tinto Stainer Plus that works with capillary gap, but it's horizontal. You can see here how the instrument is washing the slide. Now it's going to dispose and eliminate the washing solution. And you will be able to see the application of a reagent. And then the instrument has a reagent motion that enables the whole slide to be covered with 100 microliters and also has movement that enables to generate a more consistent reproducible staining and, and, it, and this motion enables uh, a more reproducible immunohistochemistry. And it's not only applied for uh, the, the application of different antibodies or detection chemistries, but also to deparaffinize and to do heat epitope retrieval at high temperatures. You can easily see how the reagent motion, you know, enables the reagent to be uh, applied and moved through the chamber. And when you are outside, you see how it moves. The system is doing its work. This is a prototype system. We This is the second prototype and hopefully we'll launch it next year. We also developing a new generation of multiplex driven 
shorter wavelength uh, sulfur chromogens like HRP fuchsia, rose, violet, and aqua, HRP gold, yellow, blue, green, mulberry, gray, navy, black. And you're gonna say, why do you want so many colors? We firmly believe that immunohistochemistry is gonna go multiplex. Uh, we're developing different applications, and here you can see what is to be the multi-detector HRP AP IHC detection system. We're hoping to launch next year, where two antibodies can be cocktail, a mouse and a rabbit, and incubated for 20 minutes, and then an anti-mouse HRP and an anti-rabbit AP label cocktail can be applied, and then two different chromogens, like in this case, you have SARS-CoV-2, and then uh, in brown, and this is lung, and then you have uh, macrophages. Actually, this macrophage is infected with SARS-CoV-2, and you can see different macrophages in with Al Scarlet. So we're actively working with the development of a new generation of multiplex systems that hopefully will be handled by the Tintocene Plus from deeper affinization all the way to dual, triple, quadruple, or quintuple type of reactions. And here we have an example of a basal cell carcinoma, P40 with HRP aqua, and cytokeratin A1 and 3 with fuchsia, P40 with HRP violet, and basal cell carcinoma with P40 again with, H with uh, HRP gold. Another example, uh, tonsil, cytokeratin in green, T67 nuclear uh, with brown, and then bimentin blue. I already talked about the dual staining of um, SARS-CoV-2. We also are able to do this and have a uh, multiplex immunofluorescence, especially as it applies to immunotherapy. And here's just an example of some of the studies being conducted at UCLA, where there is before treatment with anti-PD-1 immunotherapy, there is no, there are no uh, CDA positive cells. After the treatment, the CDA positive start attacking the, the tumor, which we can detect then, you know, using a multiplex assay to detect PD-1, PD-L1, and, and this melanoma, SOX-10, and CD-8, and FOXP-3 to detect activated T lymphocytes. And with that, I conclude my presentation. I want to thank you very much for your participation. And now we would love to answer any questions if you have any.